Imagine this people lying on the streets, with nowhere to stay, nowhere to go. In the shadow of China's glittering skyscrapers and rapid advancements, a shocking reality unfolds. Despite its booming economy and technological marvels, China faces a crisis that threatens the very survival of some of its citizens. The reasons are many. Economic disparities, rural to urban migration, and a lack of social safety nets contribute to this growing problem. Millions move to cities in search of a better life, only to find themselves without jobs and without homes. The government's efforts, while significant, are not enough to keep up with the sheer number of people in need. This is not just a story of poverty, it's a story of survival. As we delve into this issue, we must ask ourselves how can a nation so advanced allow this to happen? The answers may shock you, but they are crucial to understanding the hidden struggles within China's rapid rise. Let's uncover the truth together. A bottle of water sells for 2 yuan on the market, while the current market purchase price for rice is just over 1 yuan. Let me tell you why farmers prefer to work for others rather than farm themselves. It's because the market purchase price for rice is so low that their fields lie fallow. This is a heartbreaking fact. Food security is paramount for all Chinese people, yet farmers suffer the most in the market. Farmers are in agony, and the nation will feel the pain. Due to the high temperature and drought for several days, the old farmer watered the fields all night. When he was tired, he fell asleep on the ground, ate the meal brought by his daughter. These are the people who keep the society functioning, but no one supports them. China is hurtling towards a catastrophic food crisis that threatens to bring the country to its knees. The warning signs are everywhere, screaming out for attention, but the nation seems to be in a state of paralysis, unable or unwilling to take the drastic action needed to avert disaster. If things keep going like this, in a year or two, ordinary people won't even have enough to eat. How can you claim to revitalize the countryside by just installing a few streetlights, fixing a road, setting up some trash cans, and painting everything white? This is like dressing up in a fancy suit while not even wearing underwear underneath. It's all show with no substance. The most frustrating part is the various reports claiming high average incomes and savings. They lie without even thinking. Right now, in the countryside, over 95% of families can't even come up with $5,600. Farming one mu, about 0.165 acres of land, isn't enough to cover a single medical bill. Raising pigs for a year might only be enough to break even without incurring debt, let alone saving any money. Where has the farmer's money gone? It's been taken by those living in luxury mansions. Do you know how hard it is for farmers? Recently, I've seen a lot of news about the heavy losses farmers in Henan have suffered due to damaged wheat crops. Many people don't understand the desperation behind farmers working around the clock to harvest their crops. Because my elders are farmers, I deeply understand the difficulties of farming. They brave the cold and heat to plow, weed, water and spray their crops, constantly fearing storms and bad weather. After all this long, hard work, their reward is often an extremely low income. Have you ever heard of a farmer getting rich from farming? No, because a year's work can result in nothing. A pound of wheat doesn't even fetch enough to buy a bottle of water. When there isn't enough to eat, people like my loved one are called uncle farmer when there's enough to eat, they're called farm laborers when there's a surplus, they're called country folk. But perhaps the most terrifying aspect of China's food crisis without dispute is the country's growing reliance on imports to feed its massive population. In 2000, China was almost entirely self-sufficient, with over 93% of its food coming from domestic sources. Fast forward to now, and that figure had plummeted to just 65.8%. China is now at the mercy of the global food market, vulnerable to price shocks, supply chain disruptions, and geopolitical tensions. If the world's food supplies were to be disrupted by war, natural disasters, or other calamities, China could find itself facing a famine of epic proportions. Not to mention, recently the General Administration of Customs of China released detailed grain import data for the first four months of the year, highlighting a significant increase in grain imports from Russia. According to media reports citing customs data, China imported 97,000 tons of wheat from Russia from January to April 2024, a staggering increase of 1840% compared to the same period last year. Additionally, imports of Russian barley amounted to 29,000 tons, up 924.1% year-on-year. 
Given the critical role of grain in China and the substantial recent purchases from international markets, particularly from countries like Brazil and the United States, Concerns have been raised about the country's potential over-reliance on a few nations for its grain supply. The sharp increase in grain imports from Russia this year has also excited the market. At the heart of the crisis is a staggering loss of farmland that defies belief. In just six years, China watched helplessly as 18 million acres of arable land vanished into thin air an area larger than the entire state of West Virginia. It's like watching a ticking time bomb, waiting for the inevitable explosion. Why is there an increase in abandoned farmland in rural areas? It's because local governments blindly push for large-scale farming, transferring land to companies for so-called large-scale operations. However, these companies face high costs and risks, and after a year or two of losses and using up subsidies, they might just leave, resulting in large areas of abandoned land. Farmers may receive some transfer fees for their land, but they no longer take responsibility for the abandoned fields. The government, in turn, is often powerless to manage these abandoned lands. And it's not just the quantity of land that's in freefall, the quality is also plummeting at an alarming rate. Over a third of China's remaining farmland is plagued by pollution, degradation, and overuse, rendering it barely fit for cultivation. The soil is so heavily contaminated with heavy metals and other toxins that it's practically poisonous. Recently, a reporter visited Huanghua village in Xinjing town, Sixia district, Yinchuan city, Ningxia Hui autonomous region. Approaching the autumn harvest, the fields were found buried under heaps of garbage. What was once fertile farmland is now a dumping ground for all kinds of waste, including household and construction debris. The foul smell of the garbage permeates the area. More than 300 acres of farmland in Yinchuan turned into a garbage dump. Local farmers revealed that their land, previously used for growing crops like corn and vegetables, is now covered in piles of trash, some over two meters high. Despite the visible damage and contamination, little has been done to address the issue. The garbage includes everything from oil-stained tools to construction materials, making it unsuitable for farming. Attempts by the villagers to seek help from local authorities have been met with indifference or bureaucratic runarounds. Despite repeated reports to the Comprehensive Enforcement Bureau and the Land Resources Enforcement Team, no substantial action has been taken. The villagers' efforts to highlight the issue have even led to intimidation and physical threats from unidentified individuals. Compounding the problem is a mass exodus of farmers that's emptying out the countryside at a rate that boggles the mind. China's agricultural workforce plunged by a staggering 170 million people that's more than the entire population of Russia. The reason for this stampede is no mystery being a farmer in China is a soul-crushing existence, plagued by backbreaking labor, meager pay, and a social status that's lower than dirt. Young people are fleeing the countryside in droves, desperate to escape the grinding poverty and hopelessness that pervades rural life. I'm agriculture broadcaster Bai Ying. The recent central, no, one document addresses the issue of many rural second-generation farmers moving to cities, leaving current farmers without successors. With rural labor shifting to urban areas, we see agricultural industrialization, rural hollowing, and an aging workforce. The shortage of rural labor is serious older farmers can't manage the fields, those born in the 80s don't want to farm, the 90s generation doesn't know how, and the youngest generation isn't interested. We need to solve who will farm in the future. Why are so many people moving to cities? It's because of low income. Farmers have land but earn little. The urgent issue is their income. Good planning and mechanization are essential, but idle workers need income. While stabilizing grain prices, we should consider farmers' perspectives, and this year's grain prices have dropped significantly. To truly solve who will farm and encourage people to return, the best way is to increase farmers' income and expand inclusive policies. Ensure everyone has land to farm and money to earn, making the land a lasting source of wealth. Farming should be desirable, providing both sustenance and significant earnings. Zhu Shopping, former legal director of the Financial and Economic Committee of the National People's Congress shared his opinions about the matter. You shouldn't blame the farmers. If you do, why not try farming yourself? Have you ever thought about why farmers stop farming? The land needs to be cultivated, and if farmers don't do it, the land will lie fallow. 
But why do they stop? If farming could generate good income, they would farm. But after working hard for a year and only earning one or two thousand yuan, how can they survive? They can't support themselves, so why stay? They can earn two or three thousand yuan a month elsewhere, which is more than farming. Naturally, they let the land go fallow. This highlights the issue of agricultural labor productivity in rural economic organization. If you can guarantee farmers a decent income, they will farm. But who can guarantee this? As if that wasn't enough, climate change is wielding a sledgehammer to China's agricultural sector, pummeling the country with droughts, floods, and heat waves that are straight out of a disaster movie. Just recently, a mega flood of biblical proportions ravaged southern China. The floodwaters were a force of pure destruction. Cars were swept away like toys, crashing into buildings and trees with terrifying force. Roads turned into deadly rivers, making it impossible to escape. In the dead of night, people could hear the chilling roar of the water, along with the cries of those trapped and the sound of collapsing structures. Oh my God, please look at Hainan. Henan really needs you to send some rain. Henan is suffering from drought. The wells are almost out of water. The crops that farmers have worked so hard to grow are dying. Meanwhile, the Chinese government seems to be fiddling while Rome burns, enacting policies that are so wrong-headed and counterproductive that they beggar belief. Wen Tijun, a renowned scholar and activist known for his work on agrarian issues and rural reconstruction in China, shared his thought. When you need land for highways, railways, airports, or buildings, it comes from farmers. Despite the government's order to protect 296 million acres of farmland, local governments often ignore this to expand. This is because in the 1990s, China faced a financial crisis. To keep it from hitting cities hard, the burden was shifted to rural areas. If a crisis couldn't be offloaded to the countryside, it caused severe urban problems, leading to reforms. Shifting crises to rural areas made farmers' resources scarcer and their lives harder. If the government doesn't invest more in agriculture and rural areas, these crises will lead to social unrest. Farmers will protest, causing instability and potential food crisis. Most petitioners are farmers complaining about property rights and low compensation for seized land. Is it fair to blame them? No. Can you blame the government for needing land for investments? Maybe, because without investments, there would be no jobs in other parts of China, leading to more instability. We need a growth rate above 7% to stay stable. At 8%, society is stable below 7%, it's not. The much-touted returning farmland to forests initiative, for example, has backfired spectacularly, leading to the wholesale destruction of precious arable land in the name of environmental protection. Local officials, desperate to meet their reforestation quotas, have been known to bulldoze perfectly good farmland and replace it with saplings that promptly die leaving behind a barren wasteland. It would be laughable if it weren't so tragic. The consequences of China's food crisis are almost too horrifying to contemplate. If the country doesn't take bold, decisive action soon, it could be facing widespread starvation, social unrest, and economic collapse on a scale not seen since the darkest days of the Great Leap Forward. Imagine the chaos and desperation of tens of millions of people fighting for scraps of food in the streets, while the government looks on helplessly, unable to stem the tide of hunger and despair. Another issue that China faces is the diminishing returns on agricultural inputs, despite significant increases in fertilizer usage. Fertilizer usage was 6.4 times but grain yield was only 2.2 times higher. This indicates a need for more sustainable and efficient farming practices to ensure long-term food security. As China continues to grapple with these challenges, it is becoming increasingly clear that the nation is facing a potential food crisis. The combination of increasing reliance on food imports, loss and degradation of arable land, conversion of agricultural land to non-agricultural uses, climate change impacts, policy and governance challenges, and diminishing returns on agricultural inputs paints a worrying picture for China's food security. The challenges to China's food security continue to mount, and the nation must take decisive action to address these issues and ensure a stable and secure food supply for its population in the years to come.